Hello, my friends, and welcome to Origins. My name is Don Chapman. It's my privilege to be your host. As you've probably know by now, Origins is a forum where we take the evidence of science and we use it to validate the truth of creation. We have a great guest with us today. Dr. Steve Austin is with us. Good to have you here, Dr. Austin. Good to be with you, Don. Now, you like to dig in the dirt. Uh, that's my favorite subject. You're uh, a world-renowned geologist. Yes. And uh, today we're going to talk about earthquakes, and you've done some digging that validates the earthquakes in the Bible. I love uh, to study Bible earthquakes, and, of course, the Holy Land where earthquakes occur along this fault. The uh, Dead Sea Transform Fault there in the Holy Land is actually the boundary between two geologic plates. And you can see that here. Uh, the African plate, over in Egypt especially, and uh, Sinai and Israel, is separated by the Dead Sea Jordan Rift right here, running up through uh, the Holy Land up into Turkey, is separated from the Arabian plate by this horizontal shifting fault. And you can see the, the more detailed descri uh, location of this fault. Runs up along the eastern side of the Dead Sea, and then on the western side of the Dead Sea, up into Galilee, and then up into Lebanon and into Assyria. Syria. And uh, this Dead Sea Transform Fault is the active plate boundary between the African plate and the Arabian plate. Does the Jordan River pretty well run along that plate? Runs right along that boundary. That, that's fascinating. Really, whole continents coming together there. And uh, that's the main action area between the two shifting plates. All right. And so the Holy Land is uh, a big uh, action area for earthquakes. Makes sense. And uh, the Dead Sea Transform Fault is the name of that system, a series of faults that run along the boundary between those two plates. Let's first of all uh, talk about these earthquakes described in the Bible. I've got seven greatest earthquakes of the Bible. And they're, they're uh, prominent in the Bible or implied in the Bible in such a way that uh, they, they become very significant. For example, Creation Week, day three, is when God gathered the oceans into their basins and allowed dry land to, to appear. God literally pushes the earth out from under the seafloor. Yes. And whatever and God the, did there, he founded the foundations of the earth. Amazing. And he, and he created uh, the dry land. Um, one of the, 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 uh, the uh, major uh, earth-shaking event in the history of the planet. Another memorable earthquake event, or associated many earthquakes, is the global flood mentioned in Genesis chapter 6 through 9. During the days of Noah, the uh, uh, greatest uh, global flood on the, on, the, on, the, on the planet. During the beginning of the flood, during the second month, the 17th day of the month, the 600th year of Noah's life, that same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened, Genesis 7, verse 11. The flood began on the ocean floor with some type of upheaval, and then it went to the, the land. In Genesis 7, 19, all the high hills on the whole heaven were covered. Wow. And so the, the springs, it talks about the springs of the ocean coming up, and, and that's associated with a shaking or dividing of the earth and the, on the, the sea floor. Yeah, the pull apart of the sea floor. That's right. Uh, Sodom and Gomorrah is described as an earth-shaking event. As the earth shook, God rained fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah, about 2050 B.C. Uh, the giving of the law on Mount Sinai is associated with a great earthquake and an earth-shaking event. It was, a, it was a, a, a terrible experience for the children of Israel, but the giving of the law was associated with that uh, uh, earthquake and fire event as Moses received God's law. The, uh, uh, a favorite earthquake of mine is Amos's earthquake about 750 B.C. The prophet Amos predicted this earthquake. And about 750 B.C., the divided kingdom, uh, the kingdom of the north, uh, Jeroboam II, that kingdom, the kingdom of Israel, was afflicted by this giant earthquake. It was God trying to get the attention of his people, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, before the captivity, before Israel went into captivity, 
uh, there was a, a major attention getting event and Amos predicted this earthquake. That's right. The prophet Amos. And it's one of the uh, biggest earthquakes in 4,000 years of, uh, uh, along that region of the Middle East. Uh, the Qumran earthquake of 31 BC. Uh, the Qumran quake, epicenter right where the Dead Sea Scrolls were buried. That event, uh, 31 BC, is not described in the Bible, but the implications and the context created by that event uh, certainly affected the writing of the New Testament. Uh, Josephus describes 20,000 people who died in Judah during this earthquake. So this is the only one that isn't really recorded in the Bible, though it affects the coming of Christ and all the people alive when he came, yeah. but we do have a record of it from Josephus. We do. And uh, so when Jesus is talking about famines and pestilences and earthquakes, he's responding to people's uh, uh, understanding. And obviously, uh, 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 every family was impacted about the time of Christ because of, the, of that earthquake, 31 BC. And then the uh, final earthquake worth mentioning is the earthquake at the cross. When Jesus dies, April 3, 33 AD, there is a great earthquake at the cross. When the it, sky goes dark. And the then sky it, goes dark, the earth shakes, right. Jesus says it is finished, the temple, the veil is torn, and the moon goes into eclipse. Now, there's also in the Bible some prophetic words talking about earthquake, right? Yes. Uh, Zechariah 14, verse 4 and 5. The Mount of Olives will be split in two from east to west, forming a great valley with half of the mountain moving north and half south. Uh, you will flee by my mountain valley. You will flee as you fled before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Now that's referring back to the same earthquake you called the Amos earthquake. That's right. Uh -huh. And so uh, Zechariah is pointing to a future earthquake when the Mount of Olives will be cleaved on the east side of Jerusalem. Yeah. And this uh, um, amazing event occurs. So not only are there earthquakes in the past, but there are earthquakes in the There's future. There's one coming, that's right. There's one coming. And the splitting of the Mount of Olives would be a terrible uh, event, a big, a really big event. Well, let's take a look at displacements observed in geologic features. A favorite area of mine is Grand Canyon, for example. The Grand Canyon basement rocks, those rocks down here in the bottom of the Grand Canyon, right down there, are the crystalline basement rocks related to Creation Week Day 3. And uh, these strata up above the crystalline basement rocks, those strata relate to the pre-flood uh, and Creation Week events. Okay. And then we see 4,000 feet of flat-lying strata in the Grand Canyon. That 4,000 feet of flat-lying strata likely relates to the global flood during the days of Noah. So you look at the basement rocks, you see the flood strata, and you see the plateau uplifted. There are great tectonic events associated with the formation of Grand Canyon. Could that be related to Creation Week and the global flood? Fascinating. So we, we see it, uh, and we can, we can talk about those shifted rocks. Notice those rocks are tilted. Uh -huh. And uh, so there's, there's some type of upheaval associated and, and you with... you take that back to day three of creation. I think day three of creation. It's and right look there. at the plateau. Yeah. It's uplifted a mile and a half above sea level. Okay. And uh, the ocean was once over the top of it. Grand Canyon provides evidence of tectonic events associated with creation week and the global flood. That's fascinating. Well, go to the screen if you would, sir, and uh, show us some of your research and things you've done. Excavation southeast of the Dead Sea. I've been involved with the Upper Jordan Valley, looking at uh, archaeological sites there, and I've looked in uh, the foothills of the Judean uh, mountains. Those are the places I've looked. And, uh, for example, it, uh, north of the Sea of Galilee, in, at the city of Hatsor, one of the biggest archaeological sites in all of the nation of Israel, the excavations show a wall and the, the wall built out of field stone is deformed from vertical. You can see the vertical indicated there. And it obviously wasn't built that way. It was deformed by an event, an earthquake. The excavator of this wall said, hey, there's a big earthquake here. Notice the collapsed debris of the ceilings of the houses next to the wall. And obviously a big earthquake 
inflicted stratum 2B uh, about 750 BC. So this would be Amos's earthquake. This is Amos's earthquake. Amos's earthquake about 750 BC. Also, ev evidence of Amos earthquake is the outer wall at Gezer, Gezer in uh, the foothills of Israel on the western side of the Judean mountains. You can see the displacement of the levels of these different hewn stone blocks. They are offset or shifted, and these stones weigh thousand pounds each and they're displaced off their foundation that's evidence of a great earthquake plus you can see the wall in the foreground here is it's fallen killed. off and then you can see the other part of the wall has fallen off so uh, this is really a big earthquake that hit that wall and uh, the excavator there said this is a no-brainer we have a, a big earthquake the um, the architecture at Qumran, which is the village where the Dead Sea Scrolls were buried, the architecture there of a, of a ritual pool shows the offset along a fault running right through the stair steps to the ritual bath. So the earthquake of 31 BC is well displayed, especially on the western side of the Dead Sea like at Qumran. This excavation area in southeastern Dead Sea area in uh, Jordan shows a mound of debris and I'll show you some detail of that mound but that mound is called Babadra, Tel Babadra is uh, evidence of an ancient walled city okay and the site of Sodom looks like a big wall there big wall 20 feet in width okay an amazing massive city sits out there about the time of Abraham and the high point is a worship site and the south wall of this uh, city is really interesting here's the south wall of Babadra showing the collapsed debris now this is a, a 4,000 year old wall that has uh, collapsed symmetrically and it looks like a gigantic earth-shaking event it wasn't the battering ram from an invading army that destroyed that wall it was some type of uh, Shook uh, shaking. And uh, could that be the earthquake associated with the fire and the judgment from heaven on Sodom? That's a fascinating picture. Dr. Austin, we have to take a break. When we come back, you've done some incredible work at the Dead Sea, and we want our viewers to hear about that. So we'll, don't you, with Dr. Steve Austin, we're talking about biblical earthquakes, the earthquakes that are recorded in the Bible. And Dr. Austin, you've had the opportunity now to do some special digs in the Dead Sea. Tell us why digging there is a great place to find out about earthquakes. We have the Dead Sea, which is one of the world's most saline lakes. And the, the sediment there that's accumulated over the years is undisturbed by animals that burrow because of the, uh, the nature of the salinity of the water. And it creates this uh, amazing record for the study of earthquakes. Here you see uh, Wadi Zellum on the southwest corner of the Dead Sea and you can see where the retreat of the lake water has allowed the sediment layers to be exposed and uh, there's a natural erosion into the sediments and we can actually look at the sediment which was accumulated over uh, through the history of the Bible. That's right there. Amazing. Undisturbed because the, the ground is so, uh, has so many minerals in it that animals. And um, it um, allows the, uh, basically, a, it's like a seismograph. It creates a record. It leaves a clear of, record for a, a you. A clear record for me to study. Okay. That is, uh, that's amazing. All right. Here we can see some of the uh, Dead Sea mud exposed. And uh, I, here I'm looking at the layer from 31 BC, right here, right here. That's 31 BC, uh, the disturbance layer. So you can actually look at that and date it because it's undisturbed and know, see where earthquakes occurred. It's, it's a historical record of the earthquakes right yeah, there for you. Right there for study. Uh -huh. And then interesting, because that's a big earthquake that, that hit Qumran just right. next door to where this earthquake uh, sediment is seen, uh, we can see the laminated sediment right here up to that level perfectly 
displayed undisturbed. And then we see a thin layer, only about three inches thick, right there. That's the earthquake of 33 AD, right there. And, and, and from this, you would say that the earthquake in 31 BC is a bigger earthquake than the one in 31 AD. 33 AD is 33 bigger. 33 AD, excuse me. Yes. Uh, and it's a, it, uh, so 31 BC is a much bigger earthquake than uh, in, in the sediment layers than 33 AD. But we can see the uh, 33 AD. That's about 64 years of, uh, of sediment. sediment there in uh, just a, f a few feet. That's amazing how and that just lines up perfectly with the, with the chronological record in God's Word. Yeah. So the question is, what earthquake are we looking at at 33, BC, uh, 33 A.D.? Well, it's when the earth shook when Jesus died. When Jesus died on the cross, according to the Gospels, there was a great earthquake. And there it is recorded in the sand of, uh, of the, yeah. the Dead Sea. In the mud layers of Dead, Dead Sea, the we, see the, we see the evidence of that. We have a column of sediment, and this is, I've, I've uh, actually drawn a picture of the upper 20 feet of sediment in the Dead Sea. This uh, is, is a remarkable thing to think about, but uh, the upper 20 feet of the sediment in the Dead Sea provides the last 4,000 years of history. Wow. And so I can go look at the layers in the last 4,000 years that accumulated the upper 20 feet, and I can ask the question, do the biblical earthquakes appear in that sediment? And let me go back in my mind. That means five out of the seven earthquakes would be in that record. Yes. So the post-flood... Uh, all uh, the first flood record is there. Record should be there. Uh-huh. Well... Is it? Is it? A good, that's a good question. So I, I drew this sketch of a core that was a mud core that was drilled at En Gedi on the western side uh -huh. of the Dead Sea. And the En Gedi uh, core shows the earthquake disturb layers as you see there in that 20 foot uh, thick sequence. And uh, there you see the earthquake uh, disturbance layers and here's my annotation on what I think those represent. Uh, there seems to be uh, a, an excellent record at 31 BC and that's a tie point and that's the Qumran earthquake 31 BC right there and 31 BC is very vividly displayed as well as 750 BC 750 BC that's Amos's earthquake right. and then a look underneath that I think there's an earthquake about 1400 BC which would be the time of the uh, conquest of the Holy Land by the children of Israel. So could that be the Exodus event, or could that be uh, the shaking of Jericho? Yeah. Jericho what do you, what do you want to think mind. about that? And, and it's about 1400 B.C. And then there's a big, um, a big record down there about 2050 B.C. Okay, and what happens in 2050 B.C.? Could that Just be reminds. Sodom and Gomorrah? Very likely. Okay. Time of Abraham. Okay. And then um, look in there, of course, there's 33 AD. So when I look at the sediment record in the Dead Sea, I see evidence of the earthquakes mentioned in the Bible. You know, doc, Dr. Austin, when we look at this, you have an assumption when you're doing your work, your archaeological work, that what I read in the Bible is going to be validated by what I find in the ground. Yes. And the Dead Sea, because it's undisturbed, has given you almost a chronological record of every earthquake we've seen in the Bible since the flood. Yes. Am I hearing you right? That's, that's right. And so, again, God's Word is validated by the more we know scientifically. Yes. And that, that's so exciting to me. And, I, you, you know, all of the scientific knowledge is good for our folks. But what's even better is for them to build a confidence in their heart that when they open God's Word, they're reading the truth. The Bible is so attacked in our culture that when I can say to people, if you'll look at how Dr. Austin has dug at the Dead Sea and at his other archaeological digs, it always validates the truth of God's Word. And you would agree with that? I agree that, that the, the physical evidence that we see in the Holy Land, in the archaeological sites, in the displaced layers, in the disturbed Dead Sea sediment provides evidence of the historicity of the Bible. 
You know, I want to say to our viewers as we wrap this up today that it, how you read God's Word is so important. Don't read it as a critic or as a skeptic because you'll miss the truth. Read it as a believer, as someone whose assumption is, as Dr. Austin's is when he goes to dig, that what I see in God's Word is true, and it will be validated by what I see uh, as, as I look at, at other scientific facts. Friends, you need a confidence in God and in His Word when you read His Word if it's going to speak into your heart and change your life. This Word of God is true, and it's validated as God's truth. And so, please, take the truth of science that we find. Let it validate for you not just that God's our Creator, but that His Word is true, because then you can build your life on His Word. And when you build your life on His Word, you'll be able to stand no matter what happens in this world. Remember this, my friend. It's God's view that He created you. You're accountable to Him. He made you. He has a plan for you. And so your worldview should be that way too. I hope you'll join us again soon on Origins. And until then, God bless you, my friend. If you'd like a copy of the PowerPoint information presented today, you can download a PDF file from our website at www.originstv.org. Or for a DVD of this series, send a $12 donation to cover shipping and handling and write to Origins, program number 1211, Cornerstone Television, Wall, Pennsylvania, 15148. Origins is made possible by the faithful prayers and the financial support of you, our Cornerstone Television family.